3.6 kilometers I've already done this morning. You can see where I am. My bike's actually in La Coletta, because that's where I parked it. And I did this walk down. So I'm not gonna go and go back up. Do you remember the song? Uh, Always wear sunscreen. Always wear sun cream. Do you remember that song? It was a talking song, wasn't it? There's one line that I remember. It says, look after your knees, because you'll miss them when they're gone. I feel like my left knee today. My left knee's a little bit... A uh, little bit clicky today. It's not the big issue. The main issue for me was my back, because 15, 20 years of playing golf, wrong, incorrectly, by the way. Um, and then hitting the ball a long way, so you're using the wrong muscles. And when you use the wrong muscles, you're putting pressure on parts of your back. I think they call it two crumbling discs I've got now at the bottom, is the reason why I don't have much sleep. So I've got a bit of a pace on today, because it's, uh, as I said, I've got to get 3.6k back. But I don't mind. I don't mind at all. It's a nice day. It's a very nice day. Hope it's nice where you are. So if you're a golfer, get lessons. It's the best thing you can do, mate. Best thing you can do is lessons. Because if you're doing it wrong, later on in life, like your knees, you'll miss them when they're gone. And like my back. What happened for me was uh, I got out early enough. So I was doing all right, actually. But then uh, I got coerced into a game of golf. It's weird, ain't coerced. I was working in a sales company and the manager was mad on golf and he's doing a Christmas do and he's like, we're gonna go play golf. And it was golf though, surfing enough near my house. And I'm like, yeah, I don't play anymore. No, come on, come on. We'll get the buggy out. We'll get the, uh, the drinks going, you know? And it was uh, Desperado was the drink. Now I've never played golf on drink before. It's actually quite a nice day out. The problem was though, because I was doing it all wrong because it's been years since I last played. By about the 14th hole, I couldn't think and get out the buggy. Not because of the drink, but because of the uh, the technique was wrong. And that's really pretty much caused most probably permanent damage because for three, four days, I was really struggling uh, after that. And now the back issue is just a constant issue now. So it's, uh, I sleep about maybe six hours and then I've got to sit up. And it's like, nobody tells you this when you're growing up, do you? When you're hitting our age, that, uh, that these things happen so if you're not here yet if you're not over 50 yet look after your knees look after your back you'll miss them when they're gone that's for sure so Harry Ops got the uh, got the cows out it was a nice walk down this way I've not actually done this way for a while because as I said before we don't living on the other side you don't tend to come over this far but now I'm on this side it's uh, I think this will be the uh, the walk of choice now I think <laughs> Um, did a vlog on the main channel just down the street uh, on Sunday that went out last night. It's doing a good reaction for it, which is nice. The title for this one is the real reason why we moved. The actual truth of why we moved. I don't even know if... I think Shelley does know it. Because I, uh, I was speaking to her about it uh, a couple of months ago. But I don't think she realised... I'll get down these stairs first. I don't think she realised to the extent of what it was. I always explain to people I've had three lives. First life was the golf pro, second life was the car sales, and this is the third life. Some of those decisions were made for me, were not in my hands, let's say. And because of that, certain circumstances evolved from it, which uh, cause it's not always in your own hands, to be honest with you. Okay. So what happens though, let's have a quick look where we're gonna go. It's weird because when you get to a level, when you're walking with somebody at the same sort of speed, you can't talk and just carry on because you're aware that they're going to start listening in. And that's when I become actually a bit self-conscious, which I'm getting better, but not quite there yet. I think if you get there, it's an arrogance, the humility of it. So what happens is I gave up golf. I actually went into business. I went to try and get into business and it was a garden furniture business shop over here. And... Uh, it failed, it failed dramatically. Went too big, too quick, too fast, too soon. Lost a lot. And then financially you lose a lot. And then you have your tail between your legs because you're like, well, you consider yourself a failure when actually you should be patting on the back for giving it a go to try and get to the next level. 
So what happened then was because I was already in Tenerife, we left Tenerife and went back to the UK. So I built myself then up in the car trade. And I did that uh, successfully again. Um, this time it was successful, but that's more from determination with the kids and stuff like that. That's where it came from. But that's, uh, that determination was, um, was the reason. Hang on, I'm going off piece. I was going off piece because that bloke there, he, he collared me earlier and uh, I didn't want him to call me again. Um, let's get back onto it. So at the end of the car trade era was the divorce. And again, it was the uh, also the bullying, by the way, in the car trade, which you might see on previous vlogs. So you're a broken man, so then what you do this time, because I was in the UK, this time I come to, come to Tenerife, and that was five years ago. And not because my mum was here, it was more because my sister. So you come for the uh, emotional help and security of family, because no matter what you do, no matter what happens, your family will always be there for you and support you, or they should be anyway. And I was fortunate enough to have that. So I came here and my sister helped us up and you know, I was in a real, real low place. I mean, the first year here, Christ, I was, I'd met Shelley and she will tell you the amount of times that I nearly gave up and went back to the UK to go back into the car trade just to get some financial security because it's, it's difficult in Tenerife to make it, to make your way if you don't have anything behind you, which I'd left everything behind. So, over the last four or five years, that's actually happened, is that, you know, I got the house, we spent a fortune on the house to get it to a standard that we could live in, um, that cost me, and, you know, again, the funds were going down. I was round the corner from my mother, I'm round the corner from my sister, and you've got to try and imagine, I've been for 16 years, two and a half thousand miles away from these people, to all of a sudden be back in the fold. Now, at the time, and that was needed and that was um, I was glad of it but eventually the urge to make it out on your own again and to make the break of your own um, I'm trying to think of the word solidarity that's probably not the word um, standalone self self-sufficiency I think that's a better word to make your own to become self-sufficient again to go, yeah, I'm back in control. Because I think that's what it was. It was gaining the control again. I think was the important thing. And by making this move away, we didn't have to move. In the end, we got told, we, could, we got told by the owners that we could have stayed there for another six months. And it's a beautiful house and it's a great view. But I went, no, and I said to Shelley, I went, no, we're going. And it was that snap, boom, no, let's go. And the reason being was because it was time for me to get the self-sufficiency rig back that's been licking his wounds and been mentally healing I suppose to actually go no I'm ready to go and stand alone again I'm ready to go and do it and that was that was a big part of it and I think that is the main reason why um, I took the decision that I wanted to go you know and uh, I'm glad I've done it and I do actually feel that I feel that now that uh, it's the old me is coming back again, where I can, um, the guy that used to look after 150 staff in a dealership, where everyone looked at you, looked to, I feel that person's coming back again. Whereas four years ago, three years ago, I couldn't see it. It was nowhere to be seen. And that's, uh, that's a big thing really. I think that's a, that's a major, a major part. Right, end of the pathway. I've got to get up this way. I'll see you in a minute. So what now then? What now, now that that position's been reached? Well, for me, now for me is um, most probably the opportunity. Hi guys, you all right? You okay? No, I'm not. I'm his mate, though. Kevin's a good friend of mine. Is he? I was, I've seen it on the... Yeah, I was watching. I'll tell him you said hello. I saw you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at the Scotsman. Kevin, look at you. Are <laughs> right, viewers? Um, what now it means for me is the chance now again to financially rebuild. I think that's what it comes down to because when you look at your pillars of life, health, happiness, finance, the first two are the most important. 
and those two now I've got you know, touch wood with health but happiness incredibly strong so now it's finance and that's the next one that we need to build and when we can build on that we're now in a position to do that we've got everything when we started five years ago or I started five years ago I gave up everything I had no car no bed no TV um, no guest beds no kids beds no furniture I bought a couch about uh, two three months ago no about two months ago and uh, it was before we moved and we should have bought it when we when, after we'd moved because we've only got to move the couch but it was quite significant because um, it was a significant moment because that was the last piece of the jigsaw because we were sat on this most uncomfortable second-hand couch that we'd bought for like 150 quid but we had it because we needed a couch and we didn't have the money or the resources to go and get another couch there was other things that were first more important that were prioritized I mean even that could be like kids flights you know to get the kids over so now we got into a position I was actually helping a mate of mine who's got uh, he's got properties all over the world all over the uh, the country and um, he's just bought a property in Tenerife and I was helping him get his furniture and I walked into this furniture shop and I saw this couch comfy spoke to Shelley and said we'll have it so we bought this couch and it was really significant because that was the final piece of the jigsaw. That was the final thing that we needed. I'm at the same speed as somebody else has gone. So I'll just hang fire and have a look around here. It was the final piece of the jigsaw. It was the final thing that we needed to say, right, now we're done. Now we can, or in my head, now I'm done. Now I can start saving. And that's the, uh, the position that we're in now, which is actually, quite a comforting one hence the reason why moving away from the golf was so significant in my eyes anyway it was in my eyes so I don't know why I need to tell you that you might uh, you know most of the story anyway so I thought most probably if I just fill in the blanks really for you that's where we are so we're not loaded <laughs> I wish I had a pound for every time I lost on the lottery we're not loaded at all but we're doing all right surviving I'll rephrase that we're actually doing more than all right and we live in Tenerife so there you go right as always I've still got about another two kilometers to do go look after your knees you'll miss them when they're gone you know what to do see you on the next one